I, 26-year-old male, have a six-year-old son, Ollie, with my ex, Caitlin, 26-year-old female. Caitlin has not been actively involved in the past four years by her own choice. She hasn't seen Ollie in a year. I have sole custody. By court order, Caitlin is supposed to pay child support. I have to remind her every month and threaten to go to court until she pays. I am doing everything on my own. Taking care of Ollie day to day. Taking him to doctor's appointments, dealing with dance, soccer and school. Nursing him through every fever and comforting him through every nightmare. And I don't mind, I love my little boy. But it can still be exhausting and emotionally draining. I have asked Caitlin to help more, but she says she has no interest. I finally gave up. That being said, Caitlin expects me to facilitate all contact. She gets angry if I don't initiate the court-ordered weekly FaceTime call, even though according to the court, she's the one who should initiate it. The same goes for having Ollie call her, even on his birthday. She just can't be bothered. I stopped doing all of that because it's not my responsibility. And most of the time when I call, she doesn't answer. Whether Caitlin sends gifts for Ollie is always uncertain. She usually doesn't even send a card. If she does send a gift, she tells me to wrap it, put her name on it, and buy a card. I did that in the beginning until Ollie's last birthday. He's learning how to read and asked why his mom's card looked the same as mine. I simply said that I was helping his mom. But that made me realize how much work I was doing for Caitlin. My sister advised me to stop putting in so much effort. If Caitlin sends gifts, I shouldn't wrap them. I should tell Ollie they're from his mom, of course, but not include gift tags or cards. A few weeks ago, Caitlin told me what she was buying off the wish list. She mentioned that she found them cheaper outside of Amazon and would be sending them herself. She asked me to wrap them and get a card. I told her she could do that herself. She pointed out that I was already wrapping gifts. I asked her if she was wrapping gifts for her boyfriend, family, etc. She said yes, but she expected me to do it for her. I told her no, and that she should put in some effort and at least wrap them or write a card herself. Or at the very least, put a gift tag. But if she doesn't, I'll just give them to Ollie as they are on Christmas morning and say they're from mommy. I don't think he'll mind that they're not wrapped. He'll just be happy to get what he wanted. Well, Caitlin called my bluff and sent them unwrapped. I put them in the closet and planned to put them out as they are on Christmas morning. Caitlin texted me a reminder to wrap them and I said, I already told you what I was doing. I'm done doing all the work for you. If you wanted to put in the effort, you could. I added that since she lives 45 minutes away, if she wanted, she could come down and wrap them herself, maybe even give them to Ollie herself. She called me a jackass and hung up. I'm starting to wonder if I should just wrap them, but I'm also so tired of constantly covering for her. Am I the jerk? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. Don't wrap them so that by the time he's old enough to find her lack of care or your deception hurtful, he'll be accustomed to the practice. Dad puts stuff from him under the tree Christmas Eve. Santa's stuff arrives in the night. Grandma's presents come with fancy ribbons and paper in the mail, but sometimes a little late. Mum's stuff is usually just in a Walmart bag, whatever. If you do the wrapping and extra touches this year, it will be harder to say no next year, and so on and so on. Don't expect her to change. Comment two, not the idiot. You're being a doormat for your ex. I get it, she's still Ollie's mom, but you don't owe her a damn thing. It seems like she only wants to be a part of Ollie's life in order to exert any modicum of control over you that she can. The court has laid out how every interaction is to happen. You don't, and shouldn't, have to do anything other than what is outlined in the custody agreement. Ollie deserves better than you trying to uphold this falsehood of who his mother is, and so do you. Now for the update. Hey Reddit, it's been a week since I posted about my ex Caitlin and the whole gift wrapping saga. You guys gave me a lot of support and advice, and I thought you deserved an update. Buckle up, because things took some unexpected turns. So, after Caitlin called me a jackass and hung up, I was pretty upset. I've been doing the single dad thing for years now, and it's been tough. I remember when Ollie was just learning to walk, and I was the one there to catch him every time he stumbled. Caitlin was around then, 
but she was always more interested in her phone than in our son. It's been like that ever since, with me picking up the slack. Anyway, I decided to stick to my guns. I wasn't going to wrap the gifts. I put them in the closet and figured that would be the end of it. But then, two days ago, I got a knock on my door. It was Caitlin, and she had wrapping paper and ribbons in her hands. I was shocked. She's never taken the initiative like this before. She said she wanted to wrap the gifts herself and spend some time with Ollie. I was hesitant, but Ollie was excited to see her, so I let her in. She actually did a decent job wrapping, and for a moment, it felt like we were a family again, but I couldn't forget all the times she'd let us down before. While she was wrapping, she started talking about how she's been feeling guilty for not being there for Ollie. She said she wanted to change and be more involved. I was skeptical, but I didn't want to argue in front of Ollie, so I just nodded and said we'd see how things go. The next day, Ollie had a soccer game. To my surprise, Caitlin showed up. She was cheering and even brought him a snack for after the game. Ollie was over the moon, and I have to admit, it was nice seeing him so happy. But I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just another one of her temporary interests. After the game, Caitlin asked if she could take Ollie out for ice cream. I was torn. On one hand, I wanted Ollie to have time with his mom. On the other, I was afraid she'd bail on him again. But Ollie was so excited, I said yes. They left, and I was a nervous wreck the whole time. They came back, and Ollie was smiling from ear to ear. Caitlin thanked me and said she'd like to do this more often. I told her we'd have to talk about it and set some ground rules if she was serious. Now, here's where the misunderstanding comes in. Yesterday, I got a call from Caitlin's mom. She was furious, accusing me of trying to get back together with Caitlin. I was confused until she mentioned seeing a picture on social media of Caitlin and me sitting close together while wrapping gifts. It looked like we were cozy and happy, but that wasn't the case at all. I explained to her mom that Caitlin had come over to wrap Ollie's gifts and that we were not getting back together. It was just a moment where we were trying to do something nice for our son. Caitlin's mom calmed down and apologized for jumping to conclusions. She said she just wanted the best for Ollie and didn't want to see us go through the same cycle again. Now, for the next story. My wife, 37 years old, recently gave birth to our son. We are living in different countries, a six to eight hour drive apart, because I, 35 years old, went back to full-time school, and she can only work in her country. This way, she could work during her pregnancy to save up for maternity leave. When her labor started, I was on rotation for my school. I got permission to leave and drove approximately eight hours to make it there at midnight, just in time. She said she had unexpected bleeding and very painful contractions for two hours in the waiting room while she waited for a doctor. But by the time I got there, she was peacefully talking to her mother. She got an epidural and asked to wait to push until I arrived. Our baby was born in the middle of the night. She had a third degree tear and a very large hemorrhoid from pushing. They moved us to a cramped room with a bed for her and a recliner that was very uncomfortable for me to sleep in. Mother-in-law went home and returned at night to relieve me. I went home, slept overnight, showered and felt refreshed. I returned the next morning. I told her how great it was to sleep in our bed and take a shower. Her condo shower has the best pressure. I told her I badly needed it after driving all day plus spending the next day in the hospital. At that point, they had moved to a private room, which still only had a fold-out padded chair that mother-in-law had slept in. My wife complained that she couldn't take a shower because the bathroom didn't have any warm water. The baby had been up all night, crying feeding, and that it hurt for her to walk because of the tear hemorrhoid. Now, our baby is two months old. I managed to have a few weeks off, 2.5 weeks, which I spent with them. Mother-in-law is staying with my wife to help with the baby. A week ago, we got into an argument about something. She started accusing me of never once having woken up at night to help with the baby and told me that it was very inconsiderate of me to have bragged about my shower sleep when she couldn't have those luxuries in the hospital. She said I should have seen that she was sleep deprived and still covered in her own sweat blood and that it was callous and dense of me to make those comments. 
She said it showed a lack of compassion. I didn't make those comments maliciously. I had gone about 48 hours without a shower, and combined with the eight-hour travel, I felt quite filthy. I had also woken up at 5 a.m. and did a five-hour shift before driving up eight to 10 hours to get to the hospital. It had been over 36 hours before I had last slept in a bed. I expressed to my wife that it felt great to take a shower and sleep because of the sleep deficit I had and because of how filthy I was feeling. I mentioned that having a good night of sleep and a shower meant that I felt fresh and could be fully present for her and the baby and as helpful as possible during this time. Am I the idiot for just expressing gratitude for my experience? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. A mild, you're the jerk. Your wife is laying there in shambles after a huge ordeal, and you take the opportunity to tell her how nice and fresh you feel after taking a great shower. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't malicious, but it shows a high level of social obliviousness. The rules of social convention say not to tell someone who is clearly starving and can't get food how your stomach is full because you just had the most amazing lunch. Comment two. You completely missed the point of what your wife was trying to say. She's upset that you aren't there enough and that when you are, you aren't helping enough. The part about you bragging about the shower and your rest was one of those examples. And yes, you're the jerk for both of those. Try to be a little bit more considerate with what you say and try to help out more with the baby when you are there. Now, for the update. Hey Reddit, it's been three months since I last posted about the birth of my son and the argument with my wife. I wish I could say things have gotten better, but buckle up because this update is a wild ride. First off, let me fill you in on some history. My wife and I have always had a strong relationship, but the distance has been a real test. She's a nurse, and her job has been her passion since before we met. I've been supportive of her career, just as she's been of my decision to go back to school. We thought we could handle the distance, but it's been tougher than we expected. Now, on to the new developments. After our argument, things cooled down for a bit. We apologized to each other, and I thought we were moving past it. But then, my mother-in-law, who's been staying with my wife to help with the baby, started to get in my wife's ear. She's always been a bit overbearing, and it seems like she's been feeding my wife doubts about my commitment to our family. The real jaw dropper came when I found out my wife had been talking to her ex. I stumbled upon this when I was visiting and saw a message pop up on her phone. It was innocent enough, but it still stung. When I confronted her, she said she just needed someone to talk to, someone who was physically there. I was hurt, but I tried to understand her need for support. Things got even more heated when I discovered that my wife had been venting to her friends about me. She painted me as this uncaring husband who left her to fend for herself. I was outraged. I've been juggling school and driving back and forth to be with them as much as I can. It felt like a slap in the face. But the real kicker? My wife's maternity leave is coming to an end and she's been stressing about going back to work. She's been having a hard time with the baby's sleep schedule, and the lack of sleep is wearing on her. I've been doing my best to help, but with my school schedule, there's only so much I can do. One night, after a particularly rough day, my wife broke down. She confessed that she felt abandoned, and that my comments about the shower and bed had been haunting her. She said she felt like I didn't appreciate how hard she was working to keep our family afloat while I was away. I tried to reassure her, but the damage was done. The confrontation that followed was intense. She accused me of not being there for her and the baby, of putting my needs first. I was floored. I reminded her of the long drives, the sleepless nights I spent studying so I could be with them, but it was like she didn't hear me. And now, the subtle twist of karma. My mother-in-law, who had been such a thorn in my side, slipped up. She accidentally let it slip to my wife that she had been exaggerating some of the things I said and did, trying to make me look bad. My wife was furious. She confronted her mother and they had a falling out. Since then, my wife has been more understanding. She's seen how hard I've been working to support us and she's apologized for doubting me. We're trying to rebuild the trust that was lost, but it's going to take time. As for me, 
I'm just trying to keep my head above water. School is demanding, and being a new dad is even more so. I'm exhausted, but I'm doing my best for my family. Now, for the next story. My 29-year-old female sister-in-law lives in the same community as me and my 32-year-old husband. She and her husband had plans to come by our home after they came back from picking up their one-year-old son from her mom's house. When they arrived, she was extremely angry and distraught. She explained that her husband dropped her and the baby off while he looked for parking, but she saw a spot open up nearby, so she tried to hold it by standing in the spot with her son in a stroller. A man got to the spot first and started to back his car into the spot, despite seeing her and the baby there, so she was forced to move out of the way. She said she went off on him, cursing and saying that he's an evil person to steal a parking spot from a baby and to endanger them by backing into the spot. The man apparently gave her a big F you and said her name isn't on the spot. Honestly, I wanted to stay neutral on the matter, especially after my husband confirmed with her and via house camera that the man very slowly backed in and clearly was not trying to run them over. My sister-in-law was clearly upset and shaken up over it, but she kept talking about how awful the man was hours after they arrived, and her husband kept validating her, which made her feel like my husband and I would be on the same page. She kept asking for our input, and we kept skirting around it with plenty of, that's crazy, and so sorry that happened to you. I had enough of it and told her that I am sorry that that happened to her, and that I understand that it was scary, but even though it wasn't her intent, she was the one endangering her child by forcing herself and the baby into the road to hold a spot. There were plenty of other parking spots. She should know as she lives in the neighborhood and she can't assume that everyone will pass her by when they see her holding a spot just because she has a baby. What if the man got angry and backed in without giving her time to move? I also told her that she can't force anyone to not take a public parking spot. She got huffy and said that she knew I wouldn't understand because I'm not a parent and that I can't comprehend how traumatic the experience was for her. Her husband said that the man should not have backed into the spot and just talked to her if he needed it that badly. I told them that I do understand that it was scary for my sister-in-law and that it was messed up for the man to back in. But ultimately, no one is entitled to a public parking spot and she shouldn't have put herself and the baby in the street to begin with. They decided to leave when they couldn't get me to agree with them, and my husband and I feel bad because my sister-in-law genuinely was shaken up. Just wondering if we are jerks and should apologize and make peace. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. She kind of used the child as a tool to get the parking spot. This is a foolish idea. I understand she was shaken, but that does not miraculously change the situation she put herself and the baby in. Comment 2, not the idiot, sheesh, should have just let the man get his parking spot and avoided all this drama. Baby's safety should come first, not trying to hold a parking spot. Now, for the update. A lot has happened since my last post about the parking spot incident with my sister-in-law. The past three days have been a roller coaster of emotions and unexpected twists that I never saw coming. After my sister-in-law and her husband stormed out of our house, things cooled down for a bit. But the next day, my husband got a call from his brother, who was still fuming about the whole situation. He insisted that we didn't understand the gravity of what his wife had gone through. My husband tried to calm him down, reminding him of the times they used to play in the neighborhood as kids, always finding spots to park their bikes without any fuss but his brother wasn't having any of it. He said that things were different now, that it was about family safety, not childhood games. Later that evening, my sister-in-law posted a rant on the community Facebook page, detailing the incident and calling out the man who took the spot. She didn't name him, but she described his car and what he looked like. The post blew up with comments. Some people were on her side, saying they had seen similar things happen in our usually quiet community. Others pointed out that standing in a parking spot wasn't a safe thing to do, especially with a child. The next day, I ran into the man from the parking spot at the local grocery store. 
He recognized me from the security footage my husband had shown him as a peace offering to prove that he wasn't trying to harm anyone. He apologized for any distress he caused, but explained that he had just moved into the area and didn't realize the spot was being saved. He mentioned his own niece was about the same age as my sister-in-law's son, and he would never intentionally put a child in danger. That evening, my husband and I invited my sister-in-law and her husband over to clear the air. We sat down and I could tell she was still upset. I brought up the man's apology, but she brushed it off, saying he was just trying to save face. Her husband nodded in agreement, his arm protectively around her. As we talked, my husband brought up memories of their childhood, how they used to resolve conflicts by talking it out and playing a game of basketball. He suggested maybe they could all go to the park this weekend, try to reconnect and move past this. My sister-in-law's husband seemed to soften at that, reminiscing about those simpler times. But just when it seemed like we were making progress, my sister-in-law's phone buzzed with a notification. She checked it and her face went pale. The community Facebook page was blowing up again. The man from the parking spot had posted his own message explaining his side of the story and apologizing for any misunderstanding. He also mentioned his conversation with me at the grocery store. My sister-in-law was livid. She felt like her privacy had been invaded and that the man was trying to turn the community against her. Her husband was trying to calm her down, but she was having none of it. She accused us of conspiring with the man to make her look bad. We tried to explain that wasn't the case, but she wouldn't listen. The argument got heated, and in the heat of the moment, my sister-in-law revealed that she had been dealing with postpartum anxiety, which made her more protective and reactive than usual. Her husband looked at her, surprised. He hadn't known the full extent of what she was going through. It was a jaw-dropping moment for all of us. We all sat in silence for a while, processing this new information. My husband reached out and took his brother's hand, telling him that we were there for them, no matter what. I could see the years of brotherhood between them, the bond that had been strained, but was still strong. In the end, my sister-in-law and her husband decided to leave again, but this time it was different. There were no harsh words, just a heavy silence filled with things left unsaid. As they walked out the door, my sister-in-law turned back, and for a brief moment, I thought she was going to say something, but she just nodded, a silent acknowledgement of the complexity of the situation. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.